हेलो गाइस इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ओलिगोपोली व्हिच इज वन ऑफ द मार्केट स्ट्रक्चर्स इन व्हिच फॉर्म ऑपरेट्स एंड वी एनालाइज द फॉर्म्स डिसीशंस विद रिगार्ड टू आउटपुट एंड द प्राइस वी हैव सीन मेनी फॉर्म्स अर्लियर I mean the two extreme forms that is monopoly and perfect competition. Then a, a kind of form which is monopolistic competition uh, that has uh, the features that could be found in perfect competition as well as in uh, monopoly. I mean some in perfect competition, some in monopoly. Oligopoly in this respect is different that it has its own feature. One thing. Second thing is that it is. more realistic that it can be commonly found in real world okay oligopoly is a market which is served by few firms this is uh, how the oligopoly can be defined product could be differentiated and could be homogeneous that hardly matters but what makes oligopoly a oligopoly is the number of firms which are only few right when the firms are the few um a single firm which is operating in the market obviously has to keep a very close vigil on what the other firms are doing because market share of each firms depends on uh, the strategy which is adopted by the firm so one such strategy could be for all the firms operating in the market to form a cartel that is a kind of collusive uh, oligopoly but non collusive oligopoly where firm is supposed to react to what others can do or what others have done that is uh, 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 non collusive uh, oligopoly today um, i will be discussing only one model uh, though there are many uh, the model which is known as the kinked demand curve okay kinked demand curve because its demand curve or the average revenue curve is kinked at a point right this kind of analysis is um, has its origin um, in uh, the uh, chamberlain's work of 19th century uh, of uh, the kind of market um, where he uh, analyzed duopoly but uh, though he did not use uh, the king demand curve as such it was only in 1939 when um, hall r l and h c j published a paper in oxford economic papers in which he has used king demand curve not uh, to arrive at the firm's output decision or the price decision rather to show that a firm under monopoly uh, sorry firm under uh, oligopoly will have a price that are sticky at certain level that is from where it will be difficult to change that so in that context he has used i mean the firm's demand curve will be like this it will be kinked okay this is suppose this is the point e which is this is average revenue curve okay it is king then perhaps in the same year in 1939 yes in the same year in a uh, journal of political economy another paper was paul sweezy this had demonstrated that this king demand curve analysis can be used uh, for uh, the firm's equilibrium output decisions so we will be discussing the nuances of the king demand curve and uh, uh, what will be the equilibrium level of output of for the firm and it is interesting to note that it is this analysis that is not based on the 
principle or the uh, popular principle of the equality of marginal cost and marginal revenue. Here the output level is determined on the basis of the average revenue curve. Okay, so this principle is not followed and this is the only form and only uh, uh, kind of uh, um, analysis where marginal cost and marginal revenue equality principle is not followed. Okay. Uh, so one significant thing is this. Now another thing is why this demand curve has the king at point A. Suppose here is the output and here uh, you take the uh, revenue and uh, cost also and as usual we take all the variants of revenue that is average or the marginal and all the variants of the cost that is average and the marginal cost. So when the uh, why the firm has uh, the demand curve uh, that is kinked, it is because the understanding which underlies this analysis is that that there is certain price where there is the informal kind of agreement amongst the uh, oligopolis firm though formally they are uh, they do not form the cartel but this is the kind of price level below which if any firm uh, revise its price or it reduces the price uh, the other firms will react to it because they will fear that it will take away the uh, a portion of uh, their customers or their demand will shrink and above that from other firms will not react because increase in the price from this level suppose op star um, uh, it will not affect their price rather the firm that will revise upwardly revise its price uh, will have its demand to shrink so this demand curve which originates from here suppose it will not go like this okay it will king although if uh, you revise the demand price upward you can but you can expect the market share uh, to fall for your form now it is because of this reason that the ab marginal revenue curve will be like this it will have i mean in this case the original rather i should just use the separate color to that will make it okay so this will be the kind of marginal revenue that will be a discontinuous one first margin first portion that is from suppose a b c and this is the broken portion okay now this is um, this consists of the two parts first from a to b pertains to the average revenue from a to e and second uh, portion of marginal revenue pertains to the average revenue curve e um, uh, downwards right now in this case the uh, rather i should uh, make uh, one more change in the diagram so that analysis is like this okay this is the broken portion so average cost curve suppose like if it is going through the um, this king demand uh, sorry broken portion uh, that means it does not go anywhere it could be uh, even if it is um, above that the marginal cost is likely uh, to be uh, going through the broken portion of the marginal revenue curve that means it does not intersect uh, the marginal revenue anywhere so this principle of equality of marginal cost and marginal revenue does not work here now in order for marginal cost suppose this is um, average cost so marginal cost has to be like this so uh, nowhere marginal cost should uh, be made to pass through the lowest point of the 
mm, yes marginal cost now so marginal cost is not defining the output level what is defining the output level for the firm is the point where the demand curve gets kinked okay so in this case it is the average revenue that decides the firm's output level because uh, it cannot raise the price above that because it will lose the market and if it reduces the price other firms will follow uh, the suit and the overall price in the market will go down reducing the share of everyone uh, i mean the profitability of everyone uh, in the market um, and uh, if marginal cost uh, has to uh, intersect either it has to be um, considerably uh, upward it has to go through in order to cut that but in that case the average revenue curve will go uh, further up that will make the whole of the analysis um, uh, useless uh, because uh, that uh, in that case also it will not determine the output level or it will go uh, below uh, sufficiently below that will be uh, quite impractical so the uh, determining factor for the output and the price level is this average revenue curve which is kinged at certain point which is e okay so this is about the uh, uh, oligopoly or the king demand curve uh, analysis of the oligopoly and forms output decision um, we will also um, discuss the other forms of the oligopoly uh, rather uh, uh, non collusive oligopoly like uh, the uh, Cornot solution or Recycleberg, but um, that is uh, for other videos. Thank you very much.